Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be restoring this vintage Masters of the Universe Bashasaurus. As you can see this uh, Bashasaurus has been through the walls a bit. I think uh, He-Man's been fighting Skeletor in one too many battles and as you can see lots of bits are broken. It's very dirty and at the moment it doesn't work. So uh, let's take a closer look at the vehicle. I'll show you what's uh, not working and what needs fixing and then we'll get on with uh, repairing this old Bashasaurus. So here it is, this is uh, He-Man's Bashasaurus and as I said it's uh, got a fair few issues with it. The first one being it is absolutely filthy. I picked this one up off eBay for I think it was about £12, something like that. And the reason I bought it was because it actually had this uh, piece which is often missing. Uh, but the rest of the vehicle is in a very sorry state. But I think we can do something with it. So first up you can see that the button that you're supposed to be able to press to move this mace forwards and backwards is stuck down. I'm not quite sure why that is stuck down or why what's happening to it so uh, we need to see if we can work that out and trying to get that working. Uh, it's also at some point uh, this arm has been pushed out too far so you can see it's actually worn a little groove in the side of it there. You actually see this quite often on the uh, Bashasaurus. This uh, arm is easily sort of moved out. I actually just push this one back in just to, uh, to check it did actually move uh, but what happens is it pushes out and the wheel then rubs against it and you get this groove in there. I might be able to fix it. I'm just wondering whether I can sort of fill that in with a bit of styrene and paint it so we'll have a look at uh, if that can be fixed up. Obviously it's also missing all of its stickers. There should be a sticker there, there should be a sticker there, one there and then one on the front panel there that is all missing and one very common issue with the Bashasaurus is this which is this little dinosaur face that's supposed to clip on the front like so. Uh, it has four clips here on the back and on this one uh, well only one of them is remaining and so it doesn't actually clip in place just the top part of one of the clips is there so uh, yeah that is a very common issue. I also think someone stuck another sticker on here from a different uh, He-Man vehicle. I can't remember which vehicle that is but that sticker shouldn't be there so I will remove that as well. But really the first thing to do with it is to give it a good clean and in this instance unlike most of the other uh, He-Man Masters of the Universe vehicles it is actually screwed together. All the ones that I've shown previously on this channel have not been screwed together so uh, I think before uh, we sort of give this a clean I'm going to take it apart and see what's going on inside. It will make it much easier to clean. There is I see one sticker left which is this one on the bottom. I will take a photograph of that because I may uh, recreate that just in case it gets sort of damaged when I wash it but uh, otherwise I think let's get this vehicle open and we might be able to see what's going on with this and once it's in pieces we will also be able to give it a bit of a wash. So uh, yeah let's get the Bashosaurus into uh, its sort of component parts. Right so to take this apart as I showed you there are four screws on the bottom. It's just a Phillips screwdriver. I will put that in there and we'll see if we can get this apart. And then it might be obvious why the uh, hammer section isn't working. Uh, there should be a, one spring in there and then a mechanism. Could be the spring has rusted away. I don't really know at this stage but uh, let's just get this unscrewed and we'll see what's uh, going on. Right well that's all the screws undone but none of them actually appear to want to fall out the bottom so the, let's just see what happens if I try and prise this open. It does look like uh, they are loose. Some of them maybe need to be unscrewed a bit more. It's very hard to tell on this toy. I can't seem to feel it unscrewing. It does feel like it's unscrewed. It just uh, doesn't want to come apart. Oh, there's one of the screws finally come out. There we go, that seems to have got it. All the screws are now falling out. So now let's see if we can take this apart. Oh look at that, the uh, lever is pinged up. That still doesn't want to uh, give up. Seems to be very permanently held together. The wheels have come out the back. Yeah this is a quite a tricky vehicle. I wonder what's going on. Let me have a little fiddle off camera and I'll see if I can uh, get this open and uh, we'll look inside it. Just a little uh, bit of a screwdriver on one side seems to have loosened that up. So we can now take these pieces off. Seems to be just getting a little bit stuck as we go around. So screwdriver just uh, in the side 
and there we go it's now opened up so i'm not quite sure what was going on with that lever that seems all free and like it wants to move now so it just seems to have got stuck somehow but that's quite interesting it's quite useful that it is working and now we can see all of the other mechanism inside so this is the mechanism that moves the uh, sort of mace arm basically when you push that button down it pulls that back and that rotates the surround so it does look like everything is moving quite free and easy so uh, let's start taking this apart so they're the rear wheels we can take those away we lift this up that should just sort of slide out. I can't see any reason why that wouldn't, like so. So that's the main part of the uh, mechanism. And then on the bottom, we have the lever part. And underneath this, there should be a spring. If I lift this up, there is a spring. And look at that, it's not even rusty. So we've managed to get everything into its component parts. And as you can see, it's even dirtier on the inside than it was on the outside. So I think what we're gonna do now is give it a good clean. Anything with metal in it, I'm not going to submerge. So you can see that we've got a, a metal uh, axle here on these wheels. So I won't submerge that, but I'll give the uh, wheels themselves a good clean. And this piece here, I don't want to submerge the midsection of it, just again, because there's a metal axle, but everything else I think we can submerge into the water. Hot soapy water and a toothbrush, and we'll give everything a good clean, and then we can start fixing things. And here is everything after a good clean and it really does make a big difference just giving this a clean this one was very filthy I've still not managed to get all of the sort of dirt and grime out I might actually give this a second go there's a few little bits sort of left inside the seat area here but the overall effect is it does look a whole lot better now I've been sort of working out in my mind whether I want to do some of the fixes I mentioned and I actually have just had a little go on this one you can see here this is a, a bit that's worn away what's happened is at some point this arm had been pulled out and it ends up rubbing on the wheel and so the plastic of the wheel has rubbed a little hole in this arm so you've got this little notch taken out and I was thinking well is it worth fixing that but actually I've just done a little sort of quick test here so I've uh, cut a very small piece of styrene and shaped it to fit and uh, by the time that's painted I actually do think that will look a whole lot better so uh, I'll show you how I did that and I, we will do that fix just because you know it's a cosmetic thing it doesn't actually need doing uh, but I've seen quite a few of these with this uh, piece worn away so let's get that done first then we'll put the whole thing back together and start dealing with the other issues but um, yeah we might as well do that just because it's there and it's a simple thing to get fixed. So as I showed you, you can see that the uh, wheel is basically worn into that. The, this arm is actually sort of held on. You can see there's a sort of little bit of a gear or something there, and you can pull that out. It's quite stiff to do, I just, so I don't know quite how it was done sort of a long time ago. I've actually pushed this back in place just to check it did work. Uh, but uh, so that pulls out and then that gets the to rub on the wheel. So what we've got to do is sort of tidy up this uh, worn piece here and we're going to be using some needle files to do that. You can see that the actual piece that's worn out is a very odd shape. What we want to do is make it nice and square so it's a little oblong piece. So I have a square needle file here. If you look at the profile of this you can see it is square. And what I'm going to do is file some more of this away until we have a nice sort of oblong piece that is missing and then we can cut a piece of styrene, stick it in place and start to shape it. But the first thing we've got to do is tidy up this so that it's a nice neat hole that we can work with. Thank you. 
OK, so you can see there I've squared up that hole. So I've now got a nice sort of uh, right angles to work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very small amount of two millimetre styrene sheet because this seems to be just about the same thickness as the piece that's missing. And I'm going to cut a piece that fits in there. I'm actually going to leave it long so that I've got something to hold on to and then I will plastic weld it in place. And once it's all set, I'll cut the sort of the, the long bit off so it's, it will be flush with the surface and then I can file it down some more to make it match. There you go, you can see it's fairly straightforward to do. So I've made, basically made this little sort of L-shaped piece and that actually sits quite nicely in there. So we'll plastic that, weld that in place, let it dry and then we'll trim it down and shape it finally. So this is what I'm using. This is EMA Model Supplies Plastic Weld. You can get various brands of this, but this is the stuff that I like. So I'll get a small amount of that, just a small amount. We'll paste it around the hole, make sure that it starts to uh, sort of dissolve a bit. And then we can get the piece that I have made. We'll push that in. Then I might put a little bit more plastic weld around just to make sure that it has sort of got enough bonding to it. Right. And now I will let that set for a few minutes and then we can trim this off and uh, shape it to uh, match the other one. That's had a few minutes to set so I can now take my plastic nippers and I'm going to sort of carefully cut off the top of that so that it's almost the right shape. And now again using some needle files I'm going to uh, file that down off camera and get that sort of so it matches as close as I can. But as you, as you can see we basically replaced that little uh, missing piece with some styrene and then a bit of paint on top of that and uh, it will look pretty good. So uh, yeah let me do a final few bits of shaping and we'll class that job as done. And there you go, that is the sort of bits of story now shaped. I think the overall effect is actually quite nice, so it was certainly worth doing. I just need to paint those to match the plastic that surrounds it. I don't have an exact orange that matches, so I've just mixed together. I've got this uh, RC420, which is a humble acrylic, and I've also got this uh, Vallejo Game Color, which is 72.007, called uh, Gold Yellow. Uh, and actually mixing those two together, I managed to come up with an orange that's, uh, you know, as close as I'm going to get with the paints that I have. So I'm just going to quickly just paint that on. Uh, it might need a couple of coats because it's uh, going straight onto white. But you can see that, that does actually sort of match reasonably well. I will put a clear top coat on that as well, just as a, a varnish to try and match the same shininess as the plastic has, uh, because both of these paints are uh, matte um, acrylic. So they will have a, a very matte finish. But you can see just doing a little bit of uh, that on there doesn't look too bad at all and certainly uh, most people wouldn't notice that this had been fixed and that's really what you want at the end of the day that someone just looking at this vehicle would go oh right that just looks perfectly normal and uh, if they don't notice it then uh, that's the job done but, um, yeah that isn't too bad at all so a couple of coats of that on there a bit of uh, top coat on and the, then uh, that will be finished now we can put the Bashasaurus back together and we're just going to reverse the process of taking it apart. I'm still not quite sure why uh, this lever wasn't working and why it was jammed in place. It just seemed to sort of come loose as I took the thing apart. So we'll put it back together and check that everything does actually work. The first thing we need to do is put in this piece, which is a sort of angled piece with some teeth on the bottom of it. There was a spring that went into that. So uh, this spring needs to latch into this uh, sort of groove here on the bottom. So you've got to put the spring in with one end sort of pushed up against that and then the other end needs to push onto here. So to do that I'm just going to hold it in place on that one and we'll sort of slide it in and it should just clip. Yeah there you go. So now what happens you can see uh, that that lever when it is pushed down it actually pushes this backwards and that is what drives the arm to swing forward. So once that's in we can now put the arm in. So we're bringing that whole wheel section. To get this in you can see that this middle piece here is actually slightly spring loaded. You can see I can push that in. There's obviously a spring inside here. So you need to push that bit to uh, the sort of right hand side and then you can get the wheel over the arch and it will get into place there. And then that should just drop in and that spring loaded piece just needs to clip behind those there. 
and that's you can see exactly now actually if I just rotate this around how this works if I uh, push back on that I'll hold this in place if I push back on that that is what pulls the arm forward it's quite a nice mechanism and that yeah you can certainly see how that works so I'll just rotate the arm forward a little bit like so then got to put the rear wheels in so that goes onto there I think you might have to hold that into place or just sort of hold it up. Certainly when I let go, that's going to drop down. So I'll just hold that there for the moment. We then take the upper body and we get to put the plunger in. Now this obviously has to go round one way as well. You can see that there is a hole at the back of it and there's this little tab here. So that has to go round that way. I think I'm just going to hold that in place with my thumb and then we can push all of these pieces together. Some of the pegs have actually broken. You can see here there's a, supposed to be a peg at the front. Um, but I don't think that's going to matter because there's so many screws in place. I'm not going to bother fixing those. But let's uh, push this together. Make sure everything is lined up. Which it is. So we can start clamping that together. Now when we took the screws out of the Bashasaurus there were four screws and one of them was a long screw. It was sort of considerably longer than the other three and that goes into this hole here. So we put that one in first. I'll drop that in. I'll get my Phillips screwdriver and we can screw that one back together and then do all the other screws and uh, yeah it will be ready to test. So uh, let me get these screwed in place and we'll see if it all works. Right, so that's all screwed together now and we can test the uh, bashing action. So if I hit this button here, you can see that the arm does swing forwards. And then if I reload it, it's, uh, the button actually does come up now. So I'm not quite sure what was going on there. It could have just been that this had got stuck in place at some point and because it was so dirty, it sort of uh, you know got a bit fused there. Just taking it apart and cleaning it has helped because you can see this now does actually work quite nice. You get quite a good bashing action. There's not quite enough spring sort of force to uh, force the arm back up. I'm not actually sure if that was how the original one worked, whether you did actually have to sort of manually move it up. But you can see here it does go forwards nicely. And then with a little bit of sort of uh, push you can see that that lever does come up. I think that is actually how it's supposed to work. I, maybe I'm wrong if someone else has one of these and you know has had it from uh, childhood then uh, do let me know but I get the feeling that that is about as, uh, as good as it's supposed to get. Now the next thing I want to do on this uh, before I attach the front section is to sort out the missing stickers because uh, they make quite a big difference to how these toys look. So you can see there are four stickers. We should have one here on the front of this panel. We've got the side panel here and then on the back we have uh, two other stickers there. Those are all missing. I've done a little bit of searching online and uh, found some scans and also sort of uh, asked uh, some of my uh, Toy Polloi followers if they had scans and I was sent a scan of uh, the Zach Paris uh, stickers that are for sale on eBay. I have to say I don't really like those stickers. They're not the right colour and they're a bit too dark. So I'm going to take those into Photoshop and uh, basically recreate the stickers from scratch because I want to make them much more vibrant and much more like they would have been originally. I also want to uh, recreate this sticker that's on the bottom. Uh, so uh, I would be doing that as well. So uh, let's go and do a bit of Photoshop work and we'll get those stickers made.
and after quite a lot of work I've managed to uh, create this so you can see this is a set of replacement stickers for the basher source I've even done the underneath one as I said and this is as close as I can get to the original so I've redrawn these completely from scratch to make them look lovely and uh, sort of sharp and really uh, nice and vibrant again uh, you need to print these out onto glossy sticky backed printer paper this file will be available from toyploy.com for free so I'm now going to cut these out I'll stick them on as you can see there are only four stickers so it's not going to take a huge amount of time the only one that I see people sticking on wrong which might be a sort of childhood thing is uh, this sticker here which is the control panel I've seen a lot of people stick it on the top here but I actually think it's supposed to go onto the front of that panel so when you're looking into the driver seat you can see that sticker so let's get these cut out and stuck onto the Bashosaurus Okay, so that is the stickers on. I've actually taken this thing apart again just because I wasn't quite sure about that arm not going back. And I watched the advert for uh, the uh, Bashasaurus, the old Mattel advert. And in that, the arm clearly sort of springs back once you press the button. So I've done a little bit more tweaking. I've basically, uh, the spring there, I've pulled it a bit so that it's a bit longer and I've got a little bit more sort of oomph to it. I've also put a little bit of grease on some of the gearing that's around there because uh, that's fairly dry. I don't think there was uh, grease on there originally but it could just be that all of this stuff has worn over the years. This is a particularly uh, played with bash of saws. You can see all of the damage and certainly the wheels are very damaged. I think it had been played with a lot and it may just be that uh, you know all of that play has sort of uh, worn things away. So a little bit of grease on those and now I can bash the arm forwards. It does actually start to rise up. It's not got quite the power to sort of rise up fully but it's getting there so um, I think all of those things I've done have certainly helped it's uh, it's got a bit more oomph to it you can see there so overall you can see it is actually working quite nicely uh, just a little bit stiff in places that may get better as that grease sort of wears in now we need to attach this front section now I was sort of thinking that I was going to rebuild all of this out of styrene because you can see there should be clips there but actually thinking about it some more I don't think that's the right way to go. Whatever I build there is liable to break again. So I'm going to go down a different route and attach this using cable ties because you can see on the front of the vehicle there's these nice holes so we've got places to put cable ties through. And I think all we need to do is actually to drill one single hole into this. You can see most of this has snapped away. There should be a bar here and then these sort of bits sticking out. But if we look up here you can see there is a piece of plastic uh, that goes sort of right the way across and I think all we need to do is to drill a hole through that so that we've got something to thread the cable ties through. So I'm going to quickly drill a hole into there. I think a five millimeter hole should do. You can just about get a five millimeter drill bit through that. The cable ties I've got here are ones that I've used before. I bought these for uh, actually attaching the sort of bat thing to Hordak. So if you watch my video on that restoring a Hordak you will see these used and they are a nice bright red cable tie. I could only buy this huge bag of them. I've slowly been working my way through them on other projects. So you can see you get uh, 97 red, uh, 140 uh, millimeters by 3.6 millimeter cable tie. So that's the size you want, 140 millimeters by 3.6 but that is going to work quite nicely because we can thread this through in some manner. I'm not quite sure which way round yet. I think possibly that way round and then tuck that round and through. And if we drill a hole into the front of uh, the, the Bashosaurus, we can cable tie that on and it will be held very firmly in place. So let's get this hole drilled and then we'll see what we can do. Right, so there we go. That is the hole drilled in the front portion of the Bashosaurus. And I have two cable ties here. And I'm trying to work out what's the best way around to put these cable ties, because I really want uh, these bits that are sort of the, uh, the the mechanism part of the cable tie to end up sort of, sort of there, so that they are hidden. So I've got my cable ties lined up the way I want them. I'm going to thread those through the holes that are on the front here of the main part of the vehicle. Those I can't actually go through the holes, so I can pull them quite a long way. I'll take the two ends here and I want to thread that through the hole that I've put in the 
front portion there. So we can do that and they should come out the bottom just about. Yep, so I've got two ends there. So you can see it looks like he's got a little tongue now. And if I turn this over, turn it this way around, now we can see the other ends of the cable ties and I can start to get these sort of pulled in place. So I've got to make sure I'm pushing the right end into the right hole if you know what I mean. So uh, that one is clearly that one. So let's push that just through there just to get it started. Start it ratcheting. And then we'll do the same on that one. And then I'm going to have to sort of start and line this up and make sure it actually fits where it should be fitting onto the front portion of the uh, brush of saw. So in fact, let me just do that a bit now and get that lined up. There you go, I think that's how it's supposed to be. So now I can clip that on there. And I'm not really sure how, how tight these need to go. I'll just sort of pull them a bit. You see that's actually holding the front on quite nicely. It's giving him little fangs, which is quite interesting to look at. So I just, I'm going to just do these up a little bit more. I think that feels tight enough. Could be I could do it a bit tighter. I don't want to sort of break any of the other bits of plastic by pulling it too tight. So now I'm just going to snip the ends of those off with some plastic nippers. It does appear you can't really see those from the front, although I'm, I'm going to rotate them round a bit, just into the front portion, like so. Now you really can't see them, and that is held on quite nicely, and it still has the same motion that the original one did, so you could rotate it forward slightly. But that is nicely held in place. A very simple fix, but it does the job. And so here is the finished basher saws. As you can see, it's really looking quite nice, considering how battered and beaten the uh, one was that I picked up off eBay. Uh, this really does display quite nicely. It's worth putting in the extra effort to get these things looking nice. Fixing the uh, sort of dinosaur bit on the front was a lot easier than I'd expected. I was thinking that was gonna actually gonna be the toughest part of it. But as you can see, a couple of cable ties and that works really very nicely. Uh, the little bits that I've fixed on this arm, you can really would be hard pushed to tell that had been repaired. Now it's nice. Uh, to be able to do that and I think it was worth the effort just to uh, get those little bits repaired and as you can see putting stickers on as well really doesn't make quite a big difference to it but really what we want to do is to test this out so uh, let's see if Skeletor can stand up to the force of this Bashasaurus. Right Skeletor let's see what you can do. Oh that was quite a nice wallet there and actually you can see the arm is starting to work quite nicely. Uh, it just takes a little bit of sort of uh, playing with it again to get it to work and I'm guessing it has got a bit stiff and a bit worn over the years so a bit of grease on there really hasn't made quite a difference and yet I don't think uh, Skeletor is any match for uh, my He-Man now that he is in his Bashasaurus. If you are restoring your own vintage Masters of the Universe Bashasaurus then do check out toyploy.com because I will be putting the sticker file I've created uh, up there for free so uh, go and download that. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.